There was one time a story by Rav Galinsky where he says there was a, a king, a king that invited another king over to his castle and surely when you invite another reputable person of status and so on, the first thing that you want to do is show him your glory. Show him your big castle and the jewels and the art and all of the wonderful things. And uh, surely the guest, being great as he is, also wants to show something too. So in this particular instance, Rav Galinsky says that the guest king, the guest king said, I have the best chef in the world. And I want to show your highness that a dish that we like. And I want you to enjoy it. So he makes him something where the Jews from Tripoli, like myself, we call it Zbana Vekukla. And none of you are going to know what that is, so I'm going to explain it to you simply. Rule number one. If you're not cooking it, don't be in the house while it's being cooked. Because the stench is horrific. Why? Because part of the food is the intestines of the animal. The intestines of the animal. And you put food in it and so on. But once finished delicious now, I haven't had this in probably 20 30 years but it's a delicious dish that people from the Middle East enjoy very much so he made him this dish and the king had this food and he said this is the best thing I've ever had this is the you, you have to tell you have to tell my master chef exactly everything you do if you're my good friend please share with us the secret he said your highness i'm already ahead of you i'm already having my chef sit down with your chef tell him exactly step by step how many grains of salt even to put he says thank you you are a true friend so they part ways the king goes back to where he came from the other king says to his chef, listen, you got the instructions? The chef says, your highness, got it. He said, okay, let's go. Oh, now, right now, right now. Okay, your highness. No, it takes four hours. Don't worry about it. Let it take four days. I want it right now. So the chef comes. He starts fixing up a dish. Gets the best of the animals, the potatoes, the veg, do, 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 everything makes the dish exactly as the instructions said. He brings it to the king. And everybody says, smells a little funny. It didn't smell like that before. He goes, oh, your highness, I, I don't know, but it's what it is. I, I followed this instruction. So okay, hopefully it tastes better than it smells. So there's a The king cuts it open takes the first bite and almost as a reflex spits out everything that was in his mouth on the chef he said i'm gonna kill you i'm you trying to poison me he goes no no your highness no 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 please please don't i did everything he said he said are you sure he said i promise you he goes go do it again and now i'm gonna have people watch you so he goes back in the kitchen several more hours and this time he's got people surrounding him like if he makes the wrong move there's a nice sword coming right straight to his neck so this guy's scared to death but he's he's a master chef so he does everything that it says to do put the dish put the that take the intestine ta -ta -ta. makes the dish several hours pass brings it to the king this time we're not really sure if it smells or it's from the last one because the last one was something to to remember the king cuts it open takes a bite and instantly spits it at the chef he goes now i'm definitely going to kill you 
He goes, Your Highness, look, I have witnesses. They saw me follow everything. The witnesses say, Your Highness, we saw it. Followed everything. He says, If you followed everything, then we're going to war. Because that means that that king that I thought was my friend, he made this. He gave his, his chef instructions to make fun of me. So he gets angry. He's raging. And he sends a message to the other king. And he says, I can't believe you did this to me, but I'm going to destroy your whole country over this dish. The other king says, what is he talking about? He brings your chef. He goes, what are you doing? What would you do? He goes, your highness, I told him what to do. He goes, are you sure I'm going to kill you? He goes, no, no, I'm sure I did it. He writes a letter back to the other king. He goes, listen, my chef told your chef everything that needs to be said. Maybe your chef is stupid or maybe you are for threatening me. But if you want to come here to visit us, we're ready. Both countries' armies are boiling. They can't wait to fight each other over this dish. Moments before the king says, let's go to war. He says, how could it be if he's saying that the chef did the right thing, that something's wrong here? Because if he really meant to poison me, if he really meant to make fun of me, he would just say so. Why isn't he saying so? The other king is thinking the same thing. He says, I don't understand. Why does this guy want to go to war with me? We were friends. If he followed the instructions, like my chef told him, then I don't, why would he be mad at me? Both of them figure it out, say, you know what? They sent a letter to each other, before we go to war, let's just put both of the chefs in jail. And they have to, we're going to listen in, we're going to see what happens. Because if something doesn't come out of it, we're just going to kill both of them instead of go to war. So that's what they do. They take both chefs, they throw them in jail. They say, listen, you two, you're not coming out until you tell us what happened. So the chef that gave the recipe says to the guy, no, what'd you do? He goes, I did exactly what you said. He says, you put the salt, I put the salt. You put the potato, I put the potato. You put the this, you put the that, everything. You sure you did it? He goes, I did it twice. And even after, while the king was waiting, I did a third time. Every time, same thing. He says, I can't believe it. I don't know what's wrong with you. He goes, I don't know what's wrong with you. What kind, of, what kind of food do you guys eat? So they're sitting. He says, listen, we have an hour. If we don't come out with something within an hour, they're going to kill both of us. You idiot. What did you make? What did you feed? He goes, you idiot. What did you feed my king? And they're both like fighting each other, but they don't know what to do. Now you have 10 minutes left. Sitting down, it's like, okay, so let's just say Kaddish on ourselves, the tshuva before we go. Before the moment's up, the chef that gave the menu thinks of something, he goes, let me ask you something. You use the intestines? He goes, yeah, obviously that's the main dish. You, you clean them, right? He said, what? What do you mean clean them? He goes, what do you mean, what do you mean you clean them? The intestines, the intestines that you put the food in. Did you clean them before you put the food there? He says, no, you never said that. He goes, you moron. It's full of fecal matter. Of course it's going to taste like that. You're supposed to clean it before you eat it. That's the mashal of Galinsky told us many years ago. What's the nimshal? Rabotai Karim. If you want to show up to Yom Kippur, if you want to show up to Rosh Hashanah, if you want to show up in front of a Kadosh Baruch Hu without cleaning up your sins, and you want to still be full of it, guess what? Your tshuva is not going to work. Your prayer is not going to work. Nothing is going to change. Before we go ask Hashem for all of the wonderful things that we want, we have to clean ourselves up. We cannot be continued. We cannot continue to be full of it, full of sins, full of tum'ah, full of garbage, full of filthy language, full of sinat chinam, full of jealousy, full of hatred, full of arrogance, full of all of the filth, 
all of the abominable acts that people do on a daily basis, you cannot continue that and then say, so Hashem, oh, you know, I'm sorry. Can I have some money? B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shuim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat